I thought I would bring you to the location where the images were taken for this week's video. Focus stacking is the process of taking multiple images from the same scene at different focus distances and then combining them together in this one image to give you a greater depth of field than, say, an individual image. It isn't always necessary to do this, but it's a good technique to have under your belt. In this week's video, you'll also be creating a safety group which will enable you to correct any anomalies and also post-process even further should you wish to use it. As always, I hope you get something from the video. And thanks again for watching. These are the five images that we are going to work with and they've been focused throughout. First focus here, second here, third here, fourth and then fifth and as you'll see here and I'm on the first image here once it snaps into focus you can see that it's focused there and I'll go to the final image and you'll be able to see that the foreground is a bit softer whereas from about four foot five foot in it's a lot sharper so these are the images that we are going to be working with now this is shot with a wide angle lens so you will notice some distortion here at that. I think it was shot at 14 mil. Yes it was. And so what we'll have to do, the first thing you have to do when you're doing these is you have to sync them all so that the light and exposure throughout the entire series of images, doesn't matter how many they are, are the same. So what you do is you choose, in this case, the first image, make my edits, hold down shift select all and then hit the sync button which synchronizes all the edits together from here select all your images right click edit in and open as layers in photoshop on a side note currently i'm using photoshop beta and for myself it doesn't open the images as I requested via Lightroom is open as layers. So there's a slight anomaly here. If that doesn't work for you, here's another thing you can do. Open each of the files individually and it'll get to the same point that you need it to be. But this is another way just to get around that should it happen to you. From here, go into File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. Now this is just a workaround just now we're doing. If we click add open files, we can select them, hold down shift and select all of them. Now you can tick here, attempt to automatically align source images, but for the purposes of what I'm trying to show you, I'm not going to connect that just now. So I'm just going to click OK. And what that will do is that will drop it into an untitled document in Photoshop as you can see here. So I'm going to turn these off back to where it should have opened them as layers in Photoshop. What to do is make sure the layers are selected and then go into edit auto align layers. Now that's the first step you must do and click OK. Once you've done that with these layers selected press Ctrl and J and that copies them up. Now these are all auto aligned. So if anything that I do at a later point, it will all match up. From here with these layers selected, put them into a group and then turn off that group. And with any luck at all, you will never need to use it, but that's the safety group. Go back to your original files that you brought in, highlight them all, go up to edit, auto blend layers and now the pop-up box will appear here and it'll say stack images and seamless tones and colors fill content aware fill transparent areas i just go with the default which is this so i'll just now click ok and let photoshop do its work once it's done it you'll notice here all the white areas are the areas that throughout the entire image most of it has been in focus and that just binds them all together into one layer here. So I can turn these off if I want. And this is the image I have. 
Now is the point where you go in and look for any anomalies whatsoever. So I know for a fact that there is one there. I can see that one. And now I'm going to move through the image just to see if there's any more at all. And this is when your safety layer comes into play. Don't see any there. Don't see any there. Yes, it's a wide angle lens. So it's getting softer to the edge. Don't see any there. So I'm going to get back to this rock here. It was a, There was a slight wind when I was taking these. So what you do now is you get back in and you turn your group back on and turn all the layers off. And turn them on individually until you find one that covers that area as best you can. And that's been so lit up. There's one there. It's still slightly soft, but that might be the best one yet. Or that one. And that one's definitely soft. So we're working between the two of these. Let's zoom in. It doesn't look too sharp there at all, to be honest. Let's see that one. That one's worse. So I'm going to work with this one. What I'm going to do with that layer is I'm going to hold down Alt and press the Mask button. And you'll notice that a Hide All Mask appears. From here, I'm going to take the brush, make sure it's white, take the size down, and then just paint over the area, like so. And in there. And that, although it is still soft with this, you can see there's been a slight movement with the camera, unfortunately. But that looks as if it's going to be the best for this one. Now, zooming back out, we've got these layers that we can play with. So... What I'm going to do, just to let you see, is I'm going to turn that layer off just now. I'll highlight that in red. I'm going to turn that layer off just now. And what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the water to see if there's maybe parts of the water that I want to add in or remove. And I'll do that by clicking on every one and looking throughout the entire image to see if there's anything I like. And let's go there. And let's go there. Right, I quite like the fact that these are expanding out more here than that. So again, what I'm going to do, just to keep this simple, you can do this through the entire areas of water if you want, but to keep this simple and to save your time, I'm just going to do this small area here. I'm going to hold down, select that layer, hold down Alt and click on the Hide All Mask. Then with a white brush, just here, that brush there, and white selected, I'm going to paint this in. Now, as I say, you can do this throughout the entire image if you wish. And just pick out certain areas that you want to perhaps. If I do that, you'll notice that that changes there. There might be something here. Yep, there was. And I'm just doing this randomly at the moment just to let you see how it works throughout the image. But you can pick up different bits from different layers here. Once you're quite happy with that, what I normally do is Shift, Control, Alt and E or Shift, Control, Command and E and that groups all these into one layer again. I can then turn these off. From here with this layer, I copy it up just so that I've got a safety copy and then go into Filter, Camera Raw Filter and edit my image. And this is the final image from the edit that you saw. I hope you found the video useful. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.